Hey everybody, welcome to the channel and thanks for checking out the channel. It's called Ham Radio Dude and today I want to show you about the spool antenna and the ultimate mod that I made that I believe makes this a great antenna for overlanding purposes. So as some of you might know, I've been playing around with the spool antenna. I made a video on it recently showing how easy it is to unspool. And I thought to myself, well, wouldn't that be cool if it was even more rapidly deployable? Insert the Ford Bronco, which has multiple M8 inserts on the roll bar, which allow us to put a bolt through here. And because this is a toroid in the middle of the spool antenna, as we've learned, we want to use a nylon bolt. This one happens to be two inches or 50 millimeters long, and it's M8 by 1.25 millimeter pitch. On the other side of this spool antenna, there's two nuts, and those two nuts are gonna do many things but more importantly, when we have two nuts there, it makes it so even if we unspool the antenna, the nuts don't work loose and this whole thing doesn't become loose. Furthermore, if we were to start spooling this back in and all the wire back in, we would have a problem. And the problem would be that this bolt right here would work its way out. And so what I've done is on the inside of the roll bar or where the bolt goes into the M8 threaded insert, I've inserted PTFE plumber's tape. This gives it a little friction so that it doesn't back out when we start spooling it up. Now, I've been driving with this for the last couple of days, and I haven't had any problems with it loosening up, but you might be wondering where exactly this is and how exactly this unspools and respools. Let me show you a couple of things. As you'll see that even if I have the Ford Broncos top down, halfway down, all the way back, completely off, I could still access the spool antenna. Even if this bar is down, I could still access the spool antenna. If I have to open this back door, I could still access the spool antenna. And there's another angle for you just in the back, which I think looks amazing. Fact of the matter is though, is if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter how amazing it looks. So here's what we gotta do. There's a bongo tie on here. It's a little rubber band essentially that allows us to kind of hold on all the wire. It's worked well during my travels over the past couple of days. And now all I'm going to do is, well, two things. I'm gonna take the strain relief off if I can. In this situation, I can't. The strain relief is a little piece of paracord and we'll get to that in just a moment. The other thing I am going to do is I'm gonna grab the antenna wire and I'm gonna start pulling. And we're just gonna keep walking out here. And eventually we'll feel a little bit of tension on the line right there. So now at this point, if I had my little dude out, I would put my little dude in the ground. I would put the mast on. I would mount that antenna wire on the little dude. And then we would walk back over here. And at this point, we would take our strain relief off, which is this 550 cord here. We're gonna find ourselves a carabiner. Take the carabiner, put it on the 550 cord. Now we just need to find some place to mount that carabiner. And as you can see up here, I have this bungee-like material and that's where I put the carabiner. Now all we have to do is we're gonna put in our banana plug wire. And then of course we put in our coax, not to mention our antenna is hung up now. I will caution you with one thing. As you could see when I walked out, I didn't put the wire over. Of course you're gonna to wanna to put the wire over if you can. And the cool thing about the Bronco is, is the wire could also fit through here if the window is on. Of course, if you have a soft top. But if not, and you forget, all you have to do is open the latches on the back of the Bronco. I happen to have hydraulic shocks and you're good to go. Now you'll see what happened right there. I have a lot of tension on that line now and I could potentially damage the banana plug. So maybe it's at this point that we decide to do one of two things. We can move the spool tunnel like this and now we have less tension. Or we could also take our strain relief and we can find somewhere else to mount it that's gonna be a little bit nicer on the actual antenna wire itself. That's it. 
now you're thinking, well, how do I reel everything back in? And that's the joy of this bolt that I want to tell you a little bit about. So the first thing I will do is I'm going to take the strain relief off and unplug the antenna from the banana plug port. Now let's just take a look in here and it's going to be difficult to show you, but right there in the middle of the screen, you could probably barely make out two nuts. <clears throat> we have a two inch or 50 millimeter bolt that goes all the way through with those two nuts in the side. And then we have a nylon bolt here. Again, it's important to have nylon for two reasons. Number one, the magnetic field of the toroid. And number two, if you scratch nylon against a PCB board, it won't scratch it up and it won't hurt it. But if you do that with metal, it's gonna scratch it up. And furthermore, there's two points on the spool tenna. These two little solder points, if you have a metal bolt on here and it hits those, it shorts them out and therefore your antenna doesn't properly function. Now all we have to do is take the 550 cord strain relief and place it around the BNC connector. And then we start reeling in or spooling in our antenna wire. Now, if you were to do this and you didn't have that PTFE tape inside, that bolt would come out very quick because what we're doing here is we're loosening the bolt, or at least we're going the way of loosening the bolt. But because of that friction, the bolt seems to stay in place pretty well. And as you can see, I have a little bit of force or tension on the antenna wire before it enters the spool tenna. Oh, hey, maybe you just want to operate right here with the spool tenna and you only have say 40 feet of wire that's out that way on your little dude. That means maybe you'll get 30 meters if you have 40 feet roughly of wire. Or you just keep reeling in because you're going to go do the next park and then when everything is finally spooled in, all you have to do is take that BOGO tie once again. And you're good to go. Look, it's not loose. It'll stay in place. You can drive to the next place and quickly deploy it. And just like that, I got to get going down the road. Now, the spool antenna is a very rapidly deployable antenna the way I have it. I would reiterate one more time, don't use metal bolts because of the impedance values. And of course, it might throw off your efficiency and other things. However, once we got the solution of a nylon bolt going through the spool tenna, two nuts, and the PTFE tape, things have been very well for me. I'm not saying that they're going to be the greatest for you, but it gives you starting ground on how to build out your ultimate overlanding antenna. And I think that this will be a really good solution. I'm going to leave you with this. Last week in my spool tenna video, I had mentioned in the title how the spool tenna was making me think differently. And I think you might now be able to understand why I'm starting to think different with the spool antenna, because I see the potential of this being a multi-use, very easy to set up, very easy to deploy and fed half wave. Hey, thanks for watching the channel. Hope you have a great one. More importantly, I hope something in here was a benefit to you. Take care, 73. Bye for now.